Yeah, put them on drugs. And usually for concentration problems and for developmental disorders, it's usually for the rest of their life. But what they should have done is they should have told the parents to get the kid out of the sun, get the kid out in the sun, get it moving, put the proper nutrients in their body at the right time during the day so their body could utilize it. Because you always want to start with the right thing before you resort to drugs. Because we all know that the body is an amazing vessel and it can heal itself if properly able to. So exercise in the brain. You know, when we used to look at research about exercise, you used to, you know, they used to think exercise was good because it brought blood and oxygen to the brain, and that's really all they thought it was good for other than building big muscles. But recently in Chicago at a major neuroscience symposium, it actually said, our bodies enrich our mind. In order for the brain to co coordinate all the functions in the body, it must be energized, and that energy comes from movement, especially from the spine. So movements of all our joints are good, but it says, especially movement of the spine. That's what enriches our minds and our brain. So essentially what it's saying is our body runs like a windmill. Every time a windmill moves, it brings energy to a building, and then it produces electricity. So every time our bodies move, we're bringing energy in the brain so it can provide electricity to flow over our nerves to every organ in our body. So chiropractic. What do we do as chiropractors and how does it help? When we adjust your spine, we're essentially putting motion back into those segments that were fixated and that were causing nerve interference because we know if there's nerve interference, the organs are getting the message that the brain's trying to send it and it can't function 100%. So what's it mean when you, you know, when you looked at your x-rays and you saw loss of curve, abnormal curves, bone spurs? That means that those areas of the spine, that's where motion has been lost you know, more than the rest. And this, these are the areas that are, that are really destroying the nervous system because if those bones aren't moving, they become fixated over time, they crush those nerves and that message is unable to be sent from the brain to the body. So motion is necessary for life. When spinal motion increases, you increase overall health, decrease disease, create feelings of happiness and well-being, and reduce the pain and discomfort to diminish the feelings of anxiety and stress. And that's why God created our joints to move, He created our spine to move, He created our shoulders, our elbows, and our hands. You know, He created us for burst training, what I'm going to talk about. And for the last 50 years, our jobs have sat us in chairs for longer and longer periods of time, staring at a screen, typing like this, so by the time we get home, we're more structurally distorted, so we're spending 98% of the time worrying about relating our body to gravity and spending only 2% of time on function. So you can see why we're tired over time and we don't want to exercise and we don't feel that we have time to do anything. So there's two types of exercise I'm going to talk about. Aerobic, with oxygen, that's your long distance. Your endurance type activities, they're low, low intensity, but they're long duration, hour, two hours. These are like your marathon runners. Anaerobic, without oxygen, sprints, burst activities. Um, these are high, high intensity for short durations. They're just, they're just bursts. And these are your sprinters, your weightlifters. Um, these, these are typically your the people that are ripped, you know, they have increased muscle tone, little body fat, whereas your aerobic people, those are the long distance runners, they're usually lean, but you can see they kind of have some, some body fat as well. So anaerobic exercise builds muscle tone and releases the good hormones that we need, but aerobic exercise burns fat. So what we're trying to do is we're actually trying to find a happy medium between the two because if aerobic exercise is carried out too long, it actually puts stress on the body and, and releases insulin and cortisol and those are both inflammatory hormones and that's why you can see they kind of have some body fat on those long distance runners. So what we're doing is we're trying to find benefits of aerobic and anaerobic and put it into 12 minutes. That's what the 12 minute revolution is all about. So if you don't lose it, use it, you lose it. <clears throat> Countless studies have shown if your muscles are not moving, they shrink, become weak, and lean muscle is actually what helps you burn fat. The more lean muscle you have, the higher your metabolism and the more fat you burn. So when I talk about lean muscle, building lean muscle, don't think that you're going to become big, bulky, muscle-bound people. Because you, as you can see from the picture, 
those two things weigh the same amount. Five pounds each, that's muscle at the bottom and that's fat at the top. So if you gain five pounds of muscle, that's going to be a lot smaller than if you gain five pounds of fat. And five pounds of fat is twice the size, you can see that. So research has shown that if you don't maintain your muscle mass, from 25 years to 60 years of age, you lose 0.5% of your muscle mass each year. And after 60, it actually doubles to 1%. So say you live to 80, you're actually losing about 40% of your muscle mass if you don't maintain it. So it means that people are not maintaining their muscle mass, and that's why they're becoming osteoporotic when they're older, and people just think it's calcium deficiency. You know, so, and eventually you, you lose so much muscle mass that your organs shut down. You know, it's not only good for bone health, but it's also good for organ function. And this was shown with <clears throat> Russian astronauts. I didn't know this until I did some research either, but Rus Russian astronauts, this was, this was the era of the space age where America and the Russians were, were competing to see who could get to space faster. But the Russians would spend 400 days in space. So like 16 months in space they would spend up there. And Americans were getting frustrated because they couldn't really understand how this was possible. Because when they tried it, they would have to abort their mission at 150 days because their muscles were getting smaller, they were becoming osteoporotic, and their organs were shutting down. It wasn't until later that they found out that the Russians had actually came up with a way to exercise while they were in space. Because in a microgravity environment, there's nothing putting stress on your bones and muscles, and that's, and that's why you need to exercise in space if you want to do um, prolonged bouts up there. So the options for, for exercising. Get a personal trainer, an exercise program, a home gym, dumbbells or resistance bands, those are easy to use at home. An accountability partner, exercise tapes. You know, we've all tried to use exercise tapes and books and whatever. Social events with friends, and just get outside. Make it, make it, a, make it just a day outside where you can get vitamin D because it's an antioxidant, anti-carcinogen. So the programs that we're going to talk about, 12 minutes a week for, begin, for beginners, or 12 minutes a day for people who are advanced. This is the beginning program. It's a surge or burst training. It's high, high intensity, short duration. The intermittent burst safely shocks the muscles. And after a maximum surge, the body must respond by releasing the good hormones, the growth, growth hormone and testosterone. And it decreases the bad ones, like cortisol and insulin. Like I said, those were the inflammatory ones. So how this works, it's various exercises. It can be either be running in place, it can be jumping jacks, it can be push-ups, it can be squats. Whatever you can do to raise your heart rate, you can use that as exercise. That's why it's beneficial to everyone, because everyone can do it. So how it works is, is 20 second cycles. You do the exercise as hard as you can for 20 seconds, you rest for 20 seconds. So your heart rate is raised, and then it has to lower after it releases those good hormones. Then 20 seconds again, then you rest for 20 seconds, and then you do another 20 seconds of exercise, and then you rest for two minutes. So that's only a minute of actual exercise. The rest of the time, you're resting. And you repeat this three or four times for a total of nine to 12 minutes, whichever you think you can do. And the good thing about this, like I said before, it's gotta be something that's, that's doable because if it's doable, everyone can do it. And so an all out effort, the 20 seconds is an all out effort, but an all out effort for person A over here is totally different than an all out effort for person B over here. So it's all about finding your personal fitness level that you wanna reach and going all out at that level. I mean, you wanna get out of your comfort zone, but it's important that you're comfortable exercising. So the effects on the body, from Harvard and Columbia research, it shows that burst training or surge training is what they called it. It, release a, uh, it releases, your body releases growth hormone. Fat is used in a greater way. Beta endorphin levels rise, those are your feel-good hormones. It increases muscle growth, growth and decreases muscle wasting. 